Good morning, everyone. This is Tim Wilmot speaking from Wizard Systems. Thanks for joining me today for Goldmine 101, our regular series of short Goldmine presentations that we run on most Tuesdays, focusing on different Goldmine topics. And this morning, I'm going to cover filters and groups. What are they? And why would you use one instead of the other? Now, this presentation will be about quarter of an hour or so in duration. It's just an overview of filters and groups, not meant to be in-depth training. My company, Wizard Systems, offer many extensive training options if you'd like to explore those with us. Now, on the call today, we've got people using all sorts of different versions of Goldmine. Uh, pretty much everything I say is, is relevant to uh, all those versions. I'll be showing the latest version, but don't worry about uh, if you've got an, an older release there. Now, the audio part of the presentation is one way only. If you've got any questions, please type those into the question box on your meeting control panel that you should see in the top right corner of your screen, and I'll do my best to answer those at the end of the session. Also, at the end, I'll be giving an update on any Goldmine product news just to keep you up to date. And by the way, the call is being recorded, so after the presentation, you should re receive an automatic email from our system with a link to the recording that you can play back at your leisure and we'll most likely pop it up on our YouTube channel as well. Okay, so let's get started. Just a brief mention as I normally do about Wizard Systems, we have implemented well over 3,000 Goldmine systems in the last 24 years or so. All we do is CRM and we have uh, we ha we also support a wide range of goldmine add-ons as well uh, recognizing that goldmine can't do everything but it does link to a number of other important other productivity add-ons that you might want to take advantage of and we do provide additional services here at wizard systems to help you get the most out of goldmine including any implementation help configuration customization training uh, we can do training at your premises, you can come to us, we're based near Bristol, or we can do training online if that suits you best. And finally, we have a Goldmine help desk service, so if you get stuck, you've got any queries, um, we're just a short phone call away from you. So filters um, and groups are all about creating lists of generally contacts in database that have some common criteria. Let me just uh, pop into our demonstration system here. And you would use filters and groups typically as a precursor before doing some kind of marketing activity, maybe doing a mailing, direct mail, email uh, broadcast, maybe before doing a report, uh, running some kind of analysis in Goldmine, doing a group schedule, or some other data management operation, turning up the data in your Goldmine system. Uh, when should you use a filter, and when should you use a group, a, a common question, and something that applies to any CRM system that allows you to create what are called dynamic or static lists, dynamic or static lists. Now, Goldmine filters work dynamically. That means that every time you're using the filter, you activate the filter as the terminology. It's searching the entire system, the entire database, to find the records matching your filter criteria. Goldmine's groups, however, are static. Once you create them, they're static. They're cast in stone, not dynamic. Um, once they've been created, they don't search the database again for matching records um, on activation. And that means that after the group has been built, been created by you, the members are not assigned again until the group is rebuilt. You can always rebuild these groups. Groups have the advantage of being indexed. They'll work much quicker than filters because they've already been created. Goldmine knows who's in the group but will not automatically update when changes or, or, or you've added new records to the database. Whereas filters, if you add a new record, it will automatically, if you use the filter, it'll automatically appear in the filter. 
So you, you, hopefully you can start to see some subtle differences between the two. Um, groups also support, just another thing, also support a wider variety of methods of selection and creating them when you're defining your search criteria. Um, filters have the advantage of being maybe a bit more accurate and up-to-date because you don't need to sort of remember, oh, I built that group some time ago, I need to refresh it or rebuild it. But they do work a little bit slower, um, not, not really that you'd notice, and offer a fewer search options than groups. Okay, so let me take you through just a, a couple of basic examples, one for filters, one for groups. Now you can get to fills and groups in, in a few different ways. Um, you can get at it from the tools menu up here, or you can get it from the contact search center when you're searching for your contacts. There's a filters and groups button that will display that left-hand panel there, toggles it on or off as you wish to display the filters and groups that you've created already. So let's go through a filter first of all. Now filters work generally and most of the time you probably would be using filters. Filters work generally on main contact information. So what I mean by that is the main information in the top half of the contract record window and also some of the tabs running across the middle of the contact record. So summary, summary of what's going on with that contact, notes and use the defined fields as you may know you can create almost any number of extra fields that you can display somewhere on your contact record. So filters will address, I will allow you to search through any of the primary contact information. So let's imagine, um, let's imagine we want to create a list of all of our contacts in Bristol. So if I pop up to my tools menu, come down to filters, that will display the filters and groups tab. We can actually see uh, both filters and groups here and, and incidentally there is another third option for creating lists of contacts in Goldman and that's the SQL query method, a slightly more sophisticated way uh, which we have covered on one of our Tuesday sessions. So we're on filters now and I want to create a new filter. First of all we give the filter a name, Bristol contact something recognizable and then we go through a process of building it basically telling Goldmine um, where is this information what value am I, am I looking for so quite simply uh, first of all we select the field or fields that we are looking at and uh, of course the, uh, the the field in this example is going to be the city what we might refer to as town and then the operator so you've got a, quite a, a wide range of different so-called operators. So the value we're looking for is it equal to, is it less than, is it greater than, is it empty? Um, in this example, we could use equal to or begins with. And then you type in, in lowercase or uppercase, it doesn't matter, the search term. Insert that into your little filter box there. There are lots of other options to... Um, add a, a few more capabilities to this filter, improve the way it works, but basically that's it. I've, I've created a very simple filter uh, criteria there, city begins with Bristol, so it's displaying it to you also in a nice handy English-like uh, fashion. So that now has been saved, it's there available for my use. Uh, there is a process of activating and releasing filters and groups when you're using them or you, you no longer want to use them. So I could activate this filter, Bristol Contacts, just activate that. I pop back to my contact record and I can now just scroll through all of the Bristol Contacts. Nice and simple way of creating a filter there. So let me just release that. Now groups. Groups work on some of the other areas uh, of gold mine, and this might be the reason why you, you might use groups over filters. Um, primarily on some of the bottom tabs, the details tab, where it allows you to, where Goldman allows you to store 
any amount of detailed information, um, information maybe relating to products or interests um, of that contact record, pending, outstanding activities, outstanding sales with this contact, and history, all of the things you've done with that contact, emails, tasks, activities, appointments, sales, and so on. Uh, a typical use of um, the, the details tab, for example, may be to track the interest of the contact. And I've, in, in, my, in my example here, I've got a, a record of, I'm keeping a record of hobbies that maybe my contacts have. Maybe um, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of corporate hospitality and I want, uh, maybe I'm, I have a, a, a golfing do coming up and I want to invite all of my golfing contacts um, to this event. So I could now create a group based on that information. So I pop over to groups here. There's my existing groups. Over in the top right corner, create a new group, like we did with the filter, give it a name, some sort of a meaningful name, so I'll know what it's, uh, it's all about at a later date, or my colleagues will know. So golf contacts, for example, and then we build the group. So I click OK here. Welcome to the group building wizard. Now, this is where you can see, again, one of the differences between groups and filters in that we can actually build this group on a number of uh, different areas in Goldmine. And incidentally, we can actually build a group based on a filter, uh, not to confuse you. But um, if you create a filter and you want to make that filter work faster or maybe work with some other application. Some of the email marketing solutions that link with Goldmine do require you to create groups. So if you've created a filter already, because that's, that's a nice and quick and simple way of defining the, the criteria there, you can create a group based on that filter ready for uh, pushing up to your email marketing platform. So this morning, um, um, I'm looking at uh, a contact that I've got a hobby of golf. Now that is called, on this screen here, that's actually called supplemental contact data. Basically that stuff on that details tab there is supplemental contact data. Click next, go to the next screen. We're looking at details records. That's the default choice there. What detail record are you looking at? Well, I'm looking at hobbies, please. And what value or keyword are you looking for in hobbies? Well, it's golf. Click next. A few more options there. Click next. Finish. Job done. It's found 19 people. Um, in a handy way, in this lower window here, we've got a little preview of the contacts that it's found. So that's an example of groups groups and filters, many, many more options that you've got there. And as I say, we do cover this in training. Or we could do, if, if, if you just want to get into filters and groups in a little bit more detail, we could offer um, a short online training session with you and your colleagues as well. So as I normally do um, on our Tuesday session, I open it out to any questions that you might have, please. So. Uh, if you have any queries, um, particularly around filters and groups, pop those into the question section there. I'll do my best to answer those. Uh, first question from Ellen. What is group schedule, I saw? Group schedule is a way of applying a follow-up task or maybe a phone call to a group of contacts across one or many of your users. Um, so if you're running a telesales team or telemarketing team and you're you're wanting, you know, you've done your, your marketing activity and you then want everyone to, or a group of people to follow up those contacts with a phone call in a few working days time, uh, that's what the group schedule feature is all about. That's probably quite a good idea for one of our Tuesday sessions. Thanks, Helen. Um, next question from Sean. Can you give a filter to another user? Um, actually, easier than that. Other users can see 
your filters that you've created. Uh, you might have seen um, on the filters and group screen, there was a user box that defaults to your username, um, but other users uh, accessing their filters and groups, they could uh, change uh, their name to another user. So, so yes, um, other users can see filters. You can incidentally restrict that use if you want to, um, if you really need to stop people accessing your filters and groups, you can do that as well in the user setup. Uh, next question from Russ, why doesn't Goldmine just have one search feature? Very good question, Russ. Um, maybe uh, uh, for historical reasons, it's it has this terminology of creating filters and groups. But as I said, I think first of all, uh, most CRM systems have a concept when you when you create these filters. Uh, other systems may call them filters, or lists, or whatever it might be, or views. Um, there is still the concept of static or dynamic, and um, so you still get this, this, uh, the, the, these options, the differences of the different types of lists. There, it's just the goldmine refers to these these dynamic lists, the dynamic list creation as a filter, and static as group. Um, unlikely to change, Russ, just the way it is. Okay, I don't think there's any other questions. If any other late questions come through, we'll answer those separately via email. Uh, just a quick update on any Goldmine news for you. We are running a Goldmine Advanced training course next Wednesday. We've got a couple of places on that. Uh, we will be covering filters and groups in a lot more detail and SQL queries. Um, so please contact me if you want information on any Goldmine training. We are expecting the sixth hotfix. We have monthly hotfixes for Goldmine. Um, little minor updates, if you like, before major updates. So the sixth hotfix is due out on the 8th of December. Um, please subscribe to our Goldmine blog, um, certainly for updated news on what's happening there. Uh, we will most likely do a, a mail out when these hotfixes become available. And please email me for any suggestions on uh, popular, any, any sort of popular topic for Goldmine that might have general appeal to most of our Goldmine customers, the Goldmine community out there, please email me any ideas you've got for future topics to me, uh, Tim Wilmot, tim at wizard-systems.com. So thanks very much for your time this morning. Hopefully that's been of interest to you and just started to uh, demystify any uh, questions you may have about the differences between filters and groups. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you next time. Uh, we're not likely to have a session next Tuesday, so the next one might be in a couple of weeks' time. Hopefully catch up with you soon. Thanks very much for your time. Bye-bye.